So in this video, I just want to talk about the Axie for Light uh, memory protocol. And this is a slightly different video from uh, other videos about high-level synthesis, but it's an important topic that I was dealing with recently, so I thought I'd make a video about it. So to understand Axie for Light, which is really just a bus protocol, we're going to start by looking at the simplest uh, you know, RAM interface that you're probably familiar with, or at least one of the simpler ones, which is the standard five port RAM interface. So suppose we've got a memory and we wanna be able to do reads and writes to uh, addresses in this memory. So maybe this would be an SRAM or something like that. So typically with uh, a fixed delay SRAM, if you wanna read, you put in the read address and then a fixed number of cycles, maybe one cycle or three cycles or however many cycles later, you get read data out. And when you want to do a write, you set the write valid to be one, and in the same cycle you set the write address and the write data, and however many cycles later, maybe it's one, three, five, a hundred, um, but some fixed number of cycles later, the write is committed and is reflected in the state of the memory. And in this very simple interface, you have a write valid, but you don't have a read valid, right? You <coughs> just assume that you're reading every single cycle because read doesn't do any state updates. Now. This interface, because you're reading every single cycle and firing up the memory to read every cycle, regardless whether the user actually puts in a valid address or not, um, isn't the most power efficient thing, right? So the first modification to this memory that we might make is adding a read enable port so that we don't have as much switching activity in the memory itself, or so that you know whatever internal operations that uh, you know a read requires don't have to be done all the time. So we could augment uh, you know, our basic memory with this write read valid port so that, um, you know, suppose the read delay is one cycle. Um, if you set read valid to one, then one cycle later, the read data will be whatever value is at read address. And if you haven't set read valid, then the read data is just garbage. So that's the first simple improvement we can make to a memory. Okay, now what if the memory isn't always ready to do reads or writes? So one of the implicit assumptions in uh, this memory design is the user says when they want to do reads and writes through this valid signal, but the memory is assumed to always be ready to do reads and writes. What if that's not always true? Maybe uh, you know it can only service reads every so often, or secretly there's several other users using the memory, and so you need some information about when you're ready um, to be allowed to use the memory. So in that case, we actually need ready signals from the memory to tell the user that uh, you know, the memory is ready to accept reads and writes. So we get a more complicated interface that looks like this, right? Um, we've got a read address and a read data, and we've got to read valid signals when we're gonna, you know, when we want to do a read. And we've also got a read ready, which says, you know, is zero if the memory isn't ready to accept a read, and is one when the memory is, and when the read ready is one and the read valid is one, the memory is ready and the user wants to read. So we trigger a read and you know the read delay number of cycles later, we get read data out and a similar thing for, uh, you know, for the writes. So now we're a little bit closer to a more versatile uh, Axie-like memory interface. So now what if the user wants to send the write address and data at different times? So, you know, just to generalize things a little bit more, you know, we have two different pieces of data that go in during a read. Uh, maybe the user wants to send the right address and then send the data later, or send the data first and then send the address later. <coughs> so now we're going to need separate ready valid signals for the right address and the right data. So instead of sending the right address and the right data when one uh, right valid and right ready field are both high, um, we're going to have separate right field or uh, valid and ready fields for the right address and for the right data. And you know you could call these groups of ports ready valid channels, right? Which are basically just some data and then ready and valid signals for communicating when that data is actually being passed. Okay, so to generalize more, um, what if the memory doesn't send the read data back in a fixed amount of time? So in our read part of the interface, we send in the read address and we tell, and the memory tells us when it's ready to do reads, um, and we say when we want to do reads through the valid. And then it's just assumed that some fixed number of cycles later, the read data uh, will be valid. Well, what if the memory might not send the read data back in a fixed amount of time? What if sometimes you'll get the data back one cycle after you set read valid and you know read, is read, read ready is one, and then other times it'll be 20 cycles later or 50. So we need a ready valid channel for the read data as well as for the read address in that case, right? And notice that, so now we have a read address channel and a read data channel, and the directions of the valid and ready are reversed, right? So now we've got to tell the memory when we're ready to receive the read data that we've requested, 
and the memory is going to tell us when it's sending back that data to us through this valid signal. Okay, now what if reads and writes can fail, right? Because the other hidden assumption in this API is that reads and writes always succeed. Nothing ever goes wrong. You're going to send in the read address and eventually you're going to get the read data back that you don't know when. And when you send in the write address, um, you know, some number of cycles later, the write gets committed. So what if reads and writes can fail? Well, then we need uh, separate channels that send back responses or separate uh, fields that send back responses that indicate whether uh, reads and writes actually succeeded. So let's add to our read data channel. In addition to the data, we're going to add this response wire, read data resp, which is going to say whether the read data we're sending back is actually valid or not, or whether this read transaction failed. And for the write, we're not going to send any data back because writes don't produce data, but we're going to send this write response back through another ready valid uh, you know, channel. And the write response is going to contain some information about whether anything went wrong during the write or whether the write succeeded. And actually, if you look in the Axie specification, these response fields, which it calls R response and B response for read response and write response, have four different values. They're two bit uh, buses and a zero on the response when the valid is high means that uh, yeah, everything went OK. And then a one means eggs OK, which uh, means exclusive access OK. You can look up that. And then a one means a slave error, which basically means something internally in the memory. The Axie slave, as it's called, didn't work. And then there can be a deck error, which usually means that, uh, well, it can mean a, a few things. You can look up what it means in the spec. Basically, it means there's no, uh, there's just nothing to communicate with, essentially. Um, but what you need to know is anything that's not a zero or a, zero or a one is going to be an error. Okay, so now we've got an API that supports reads and writes to the RAM. It supports reads and writes in variable time, and it has some error handling. And this five uh, groups of ports with ready valid signals is the core of the Axie Light uh, memory interface. It's basically just five groups of ports, which uh, the Axie spec calls uh, ready valid channels, um, that allow you to basically send in read addresses and get back read data in variable amounts of time, and send in write addresses and write data and get a response back to tell you whether your write succeeded in some variable amount of time, uh, with all of the communication mediated through these ready valid channels. So Axie's got a couple of other miscellaneous features, even though that's the core, or Axie Lite does, and Axie has even more. So here's some extra features. One that you might want is what's called a strobed write. So suppose our memory looks like this, and then we write this value, OX, FFFFFF, to address two. You can add this thing called a strobe, which is basically a mask on the write data. So if our strobe is 1010, we'll actually only write uh, these two uh, FF groups, or bytes, uh, to the memory. And you know, if the strobe is all ones, then you write the entire word. So it's basically just um, a set of bits that indicate which bytes in the write data are actually valid if you want to do byte by byte writes. And you add this strobe port to the write data. So when you pass in the write data, you pass in um, a two bit or a however many bit uh, strobe field, which has one bit in it for every byte in the uh, write data. And then the other part of Axie, which is a little obscure, is access permissions on reads and writes. So maybe not all reads and writes are created equal. And so uh, you have this prot field that you send in with the address that you're accessing. And if you look at the Axie spec, the prot field is three bits, and each bit indicates something about the access, whether it's privileged or unprivileged, secure or not secure, and whether it's a data access or an instruction access. Um, you know, in a lot of the open source implementations you see on GitHub, things like this aren't even actually supported, but you can look in the spec and see what these uh, different things mean. They're basically just a little bit of metadata to add information about security and privileges and things like that. And that's really the Axie interface. So you have a clock, a reset, and then you have these five channels. Together it's 21 ports, and they have slightly different names. So if you look in the Axie spec, um, the guy who's the memory who's servicing requests is called uh, the slave, and then the guy who's producing addresses uh, to make requests to, reads or writes, is called the master. And then there's this list of 21 ports, which is really just these five groups of ports with slightly different names, and a clock, and a reset, which are the Axie 4 Lite uh, interface signals. So that's how Axie Lite works in a short amount of time, and I'll see you next time.